Well, welcome to Modeling Time with me, Brian Banner. And in the last video, we got the cab done, you know, constructed and all that. Of course, like I keep saying, it's not painted and I can't paint it until I get the hood done. So now it's time to start on building the hood. So um, as I showed you in the last videos, the EMD as built GP28 hoods are done um, as far as they can go and I can get them painted. The NBWs will go on after the paint work's done because it's easier to mask without the NBWs on there where the grab irons go and, and such. So that those are going to get primer gray. This one now needs to get constructed. So let me get the camera set up over here and we'll get started on that. All right, so the first item on the construction of the hood um, is to deconstruct a little bit of it, not a lot. What I need to do is cut this area out right here and put the PAF box in. So the PAF box means paper air, air filter box. So this is an, uh, from an Athern blue box model. It's the paper air filter box portion of it. I've squared up the back. I've squared up, wait a second, let's, okay, this is the front. I've squared up the front. I've squared up the back. And I've squared up the right-hand side. Now, the reason I had to square up the right-hand side, because the way it's molded, um, there's a parting line right here. And part of it kind of tapers down a little bit, and part of it's straight, so I just straightened that all the way across. This part's not going to be seen anyways. It's going to be stuck inside of the hood here, because this is going to sit out here approximately like like about right there. So this so this portion where the door is will be out even with the side of the hood here, or the side of the hood over here, where it bulges out a little bit. The dynamic brake catch will be cut, and it'll go right up against the uh, back face of this. So let me get this all figured out where I need to make the cuts, and I'll have to s sand down the, the rest of the... Um, the hatch, the exhaust hatch over, let me get my fingers out of the way, the exhaust hatch over here. And once this is glued in, all of this will be filled in and it'll be um, one piece all the way across. So I don't need to cut this side out. The dynamic brake blister will go all the way forward like it's supposed to, but it will be cut on the left hand side for the air box. So that'll be out like that. Now this air box, the height of it is shorter than the height of this area right here. So I'm going to have to fill in on the bottom with some styrene in here to build that out. So I need to get all that designed, figure out where I need to make my cut, and then get this paper air filter box back into here. All right, well, a couple of days have passed since I... Uh um, last did or since I did that last clip and uh, I've got the half box in you can see it's it's all in there let me get the light there we go sorry about this glare over here it's this piece of glass so let me see if I can move that out of the way still there we go all right so I've got the path box in and uh, it wasn't done at all the way that I explained it. But I left that last clip in because I wanted to illustrate how, as you're going through this process, the your thought process will change, the design will change, and, and you'll come up with another way that makes it easier, hopefully. Well, that's what happened, as well as almost a disaster. <laughs> so I'll explain all that. So anyways, what I did, is I cut this area out, see where the white is of course, so I, I cut the plastic area out, the, the blisters weren't on yet when I did that of course, so I cut the area out to the size that I needed. I was then kind of fitting the box in where, if you remember I said I squared it all up and everything, well that was unnecessary because all I'm using is the face of the box that had the door on it. So I took a, <coughs> excuse me, a couple pieces of thick styrene. Uh, let me see what size is that. That was uh, a couple pieces of three quarter by quarter inch styrene, and I cut them, you know, bigger than what I needed, 
and I glued them together to make a block that was bigger than what I needed here. So after that dried, I cut the block to size, this size that you see right here, and the depth this way. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so then I fit that box in and everything was going great. Well now I had to cut the inside out because I can't leave that big block on the inside. It'll interfere with um, the electronics that I'll be putting in here and things like that. So, as in if you look in there, you see this gouge right here. Well, everything was going fine as I was cutting the inside. I, not in the shell, but I had, I had traced around the block what I needed to cut out. So I took the block out, put it in my mill, and as I was cutting it, I got to the last cut and the bit grabbed it and ripped it out. <laughs> Thankfully, it did not destroy the door. It only ripped, there's a, there was a tear right here. You can see the filler that I put in there. And right here, there was a gouge. So that's all smoothed out now. And I glued all this back together and then put some, um, this stuff in there. This uh, Mr. Hobby, Mr. Dissolved Putty. I put that in there. It's kind of like dissolved plastic, I guess, or something like that. So I put that in and let it dry and then um, sanded it down. Then I put the block in here. It was all sized up. To put the door part in there, I'd cut just that piece off of the, of the, um, the atherin part and I squared up the back of it. Then I cut a notch into this plastic piece here and set the door in. Then I had to put a little bit of a filler piece on this side to make up for the extra area that was open there. So then I glued all that in, got all this glued in. Oh, real quick, before I glued that in, I glued this blister side on and trimmed it to even with the opening. Then I glued the block in and then I glued this blister on this side. So everything's solid, it's all filled in and sanded smooth. And this block is down to the level of this part of the hood not the plate, so there'll be a little line for the plate in that. After that, I went ahead and filled all the um, all the uh, lift ring holes because I'm redrilling them. These holes were way too big for what I needed. Um, so that's all done. The path box is in. I like the way it looks. I think it's gonna I think it's gonna really make this model look unique and and kind of cool. Um, so anyway, moving along, I'll get all the the lift rings on last. Moving on to the um, dynamic or the non-dynamic brake section. Got a piece of something in there. I don't know what that is. Oh, it was just a piece of um, sanding dust from when I was doing some sanding. So um, the idea of this, it's going to get four non-turbo exhaust stacks in here. So there will be two spaced basically the same as this hood on here. And then there will be two like right next to each other in the middle. But I need to put a plate down in here. So what I've done is I've filled in this hole with a piece of, piece, a piece of thick styrene. And you can see it, it comes out a little bit on the inside, probably about maybe 30 thousandths. But that's not going to intrude on anything. And if it does, I can just take a Dremel tool and clean that straight off. So it's the same thickness as the gray plastic. So it's even with the top. You won't even see it. I don't need to fill anything in there. And then I've cut this piece of 15,000 styrene so that, let me see which way does it go this way, so that it will fit right down in there. And that will represent the plate that's supposed to be there. Now normally the plate would have a hole in it and then there would be a circular plate bolted on top to cover up where the fan would have been. But since this is a rec rebuild, the idea is that the shop filled that plate in and or welded a plate in there and then ground it all smooth so it's it's it'll serve as the base for the exhaust because one of the exhausts is going to sit right over where the hole is basically. So that's the whole idea for that. Now this 
plate is an inch thick. So if you take that in HO scale, that's 0 0.01148, round that to three decimal places and you get 0 0.012. So the difference is two thousandths. And if you can see two thousandths, um, more power to you, man, because that is pretty small. Let me show you what two thousandths is. There we go, right there. There's two thousandths. Can you see through that? So if you look here, you can get a better idea of where two thousandths is. So if, it's, if you can see that across this distance and stuff, then that's great. But I think 15 thousandths will get the point across. It'll look good, and, and you'll notice that that's up there. I still have to put the little piece... The angle at one in one and a half by two inch angle piece across here, but I'll do that after I get other things done. So right now, what's left for me to do is to actually get a little sanding done right here, not much, just a little bit, and then put this piece in. Now, the reason I put this piece in and not just glue this right over the top is as glue dries, especially a liquid cement. It causes the plastic to kind of shrink a little bit and it'll suck down into that hole just a little bit. But when you put paint on it, that's when you'll notice it and it'll be too late. So I reinforce it with a piece of plastic and you won't see any, any dip down in there. So I'll go ahead and get this um, put in there. Then the next thing is I've got these uh, Overland um, exhaust stacks. These are the tall exhaust stacks that were used on Union Pacific units um, with the extra height. So I'll clean these up and I'll get those. So I got four of those. I actually have more in a box somewhere, but I got four of those for this. So those will go across the top there. So that's what I'm working on now. So I'll go ahead and get this glued down in, or actually, like I said, I'll sand this down just a little bit and then I'll get this plate glued down in and then I'll start working on getting the stacks cleaned up and getting the stacks in place. All right, so I've got the stacks cleaned up. Oh, you can't see them. So I got the stacks all cleaned up and they're ready to go on. I have drawn in on the roof where the stacks will be going. So I need to cut that out so they'll look something like this. So this one will go up here. That one will go there. And we got one that'll go there. And then we've got one that will go right back here. So it looks something like that when it's done. So what I've done on the bottom of these stacks, there's a little landing. It looks like where they solder when they, because these were overland parts from their brass models. So it appears that when, what they did is they put this block under here so there was a hole in the etching on the top of the hood and they can just solder that in and these, these um, plates will go flat up against, oh I'm sorry, let me go over that again. So you got this pad here that sticks down below the, the mounting plate and in the, in the hood they probably have an opening like that where this fart part fits through the etching for the hood and then they just solder it together. So I'm gonna cut that opening out so that I can have a nice solid glue point or joint right there for those. So I'm gonna go ahead and what I'll do is uh, I'm thinking about milling them out. That will give me a nice straight edge on all sides. So if I can get a block under there that will, that will hold this square I'll do that. What I'll have to do is that round plug that I put in there, I'll have to shave that flush with the roof. So if I put a block in here, it'll sit flat up against the underside of the, uh, the hood. So I'm going to go ahead and get these cut out and I'll get these stacks glued in. All right, so I'm going to, I made the decision to go ahead and mill these out. So I'll use a 16th inch cutter or maybe even a um, 40 thousandths cutter, and I'll cut 
up to the lines and then I'll come back manually with a knife and cut the corners. So what I had to do is I had to go on the inside and smooth this out so that this plug was at least even or, be or s below the face, not below, but above the face or the of this surface here. So to do that, I put a eighth inch milling bit into my drill bit and I just held it with my hands and I just kind of worked it around like that until I got this plug cut down and then I sanded it a bit so it's nice and flat. So now I can put it on my, on my um, fixture here and it sits flat against the inside of the hood and then I can take some of this blue painter's tape Get this off of here, show you what I do. I mean, it's really basic. So I'll take a piece of blue painter's tape and I'll tape this hood down. So there's that side and then I'll get another piece and we'll pull this hood down and we'll put it on this side and now that's really down tight on there and now I can put this in the vise and I won't be making big cuts, so it's not going to rip this shell off. The painter's tape has plenty of strength on it to hold it down, and I'll just take small cuts and go in there and clean those out. So let me go ahead and get that done, and we'll come back and I'll clean out those corners. All right, so I've got the holes cut. I had a little bit of a mishap, but it wasn't... It didn't cause any problems. The, the shell did shift a little bit right there when I was, I cut, I cut a little too deep so it grabbed and pulled, but that's underneath the plate so I don't have to fill it and worry about it. So that's cut. Now, when you do stuff like this and you're using cast parts, put a very, very small chamfer on each edge because where the casting is, Typically, there will be a little bit of a fillet in there, uh, sometimes not. I'm sorry, I'm still off camera there. There'll be a little bit of a fillet in, in a joint like that or where two surfaces meet. So we want to make sure that the plate fits flat. Sometimes there's not. I just want to make sure that these plates fit flat. So let's see how it looks. This one's a tight fit. There we go. And there we have some exhaust stacks sticking up. Now, I went with the tall exhaust stacks because I went with the theory that the air flowing over the hood could act as like an air dam if the stacks were down below the top of this this hood. So I put the stacks up tall so the air coming out will help to pull the exhaust out. So that's what it looks like there. And I can go ahead and glue these in. I'll glue them in from underneath. And I, I think it turned out really well. So my next step now, moving right along fairly quickly, will be to work on the fans. Now these will be standard Canon fans. This one, as I mentioned earlier, I have a kit that uses the Canon 36-inch fan, which is correct. It just has a different mounting features. If I can make it work, I'll use that one. If I cannot make it work, then the shop will have blanked this one off and just use the two fans like a standard 28. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to work on the fans now. I'll work on this one first because it's the most difficult that I'll have to do. These ones are pretty easy since they're just standard Kato fans. Okay, so it's time to work on the fans. 
Um, real quick, before I start on the fans, I just want to um, relay a little bit of information to you. Um, a fellow modeler, Mark, from the um, Atlas Rescue Forum, gave me a little tip the other day on, you know, when you have a scratch in your clear windows and stuff like that. And he was saying to use, or somebody had told him, to use a Brasso. Uh, soak a small rag or cloth or something like that in brass, so let it dry, and then polish the window out. I would have done that if I would have known ahead of time on this, but I'm fairly happy with what's going on with the windows um, and stuff like that. Another trick, or two more tricks, um, I looked up, um, and I don't know if I mentioned these or not, but one is to dip the glass into... Um, future or uh, dip the piece of glass or you know clear plastic into to me a clear gloss and just let them drip dry so, so, so those are a couple of um, tips and stuff like that um, with these windows I did the clear gloss thing um, they're okay and I think they'll pass muster so I'm not too concerned about it but I want to thank Mark for for emailing me that suggestion with Brasso <clears throat> okay, so moving on to the fans. I don't really need to talk about the 48 inch fans. These aren't glued on yet. Um, I think I did enough explanation on these 48 inch fans and the disappointment with some of the, you know, the mold, what's happened with the molds and stuff like There's nothing you can do about it. And I'm not going to go into it anymore. But I think I showed the fans pretty good on the Pennsylvania GP35. So I'm not going to talk about those what I am going to talk about is the 36 inch fan and there's a little bit of information I want to relay to you all as modelers and hopefully you'll get a good uh, sense of what what's going on the differences between a GP30 and a GP35 fan um, are quite apparent of course if you've seen both of them um, the Canon fan, of course, is a dead-on image of a 35. So the differences are in two places. One is the grill, and the other is the fan shroud, which is the, this upper portion up here. Now I'm going to zoom in on this in a minute, and, uh, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so, the base for both the 30 and the 35 fan are exactly the same. The bolt-on part that bolts onto the top of the hood are exactly the same. Also, it is the same as a pan-top fan, such as the, um, the uh, uh, GP7s, 9s, 18s, and, and so on, and the F-unit fans. Those bases are the same. Where they differ is in the fan guard, or if you want to call it the fan shroud, and of course the grills. So on the 30, I can put a um, pan top fan like the um, like what I did on the Pennsylvania unit. Um, the Canon Company one would be a really nice option for this. I can put on a GP30 fan, which nobody makes, and I have to make myself. Or I could put the GP35 fan up there. So I've got options. So there's going to be a fan in here no matter what. I'm not going to plate it over. It's either going to be a 30 fan or a GP7 style pan top fan. Not sure. Right now I'm working on the 30 fan and so far it's coming out not too bad. I like, I like what's happening with it. I just have to tweak it a little bit more and I will show you that here in a minute. So let me explain the differences and, and stuff. You can use a Canon GP35 fan base and and um, fan guard to make a GP30. Um, but there's a couple things you have to do. Let me zoom in on this. Because I have to show you something here. A little too much. Let me zoom back. Let me see if I can't get this to focus. There we go. Okay. So we know what a GP35 fan See if I can get this focus. Where is the focus point? Come on. 
Let me zoom back a little bit. There we go, just a little bit. Okay, so we know what a GP35 fan looks like. The Canon one is, is perfect for the 36 inch fan. So what I'm gonna show you here, do you see this little, do you see this little nub right here? That piece right there where my, see my point, yeah. That piece right there. That nub is the point that holds down the fan guard for the GP35 and the GP30. Now on the GP35, there are one, two, three, there's four of them. Same on the GP30. That nub is part of the fan base. On the 35, the way they hold the fan guard down, now on both the 35 and the 30, the grill is welded to the fan guard. So that's all one piece, the grill and the fan guard. Now the way they hold this down is they have a piece of flat spring steel that comes up and then it comes out at a like a triangle and then comes up and hooks over the top. That little triangle is the spring part that puts tension on the fan guard and holds it in place. So you got four of them all the way around. On a GP30, that's not how it works. On the GP30, if you have one of these kits, and I don't know if you can see it in this, in this view, there is a very, very small hint of a line that's at the same height as this little nub that goes all the way around the, the fan. That is the fan guard. On a GP30, there's a flange right at the bottom of the fan guard that bolts onto those little nubs. So that's the difference between the fan guard of a 35 and a 30. On the 30, there's another flange that goes around it and there's a bolt that goes in it. On the 35, there's a piece of spring steel that bolts to that little nub and then clips over the top of the fan. Now, on the 35, of course, you've got this open style grill that the Canon and Company part comes with. Beautiful etching. On the 30, it is kind of like, it's kind of like the um, pan top fan where it has these blades coming out at approximately 10 degrees. This is somewhat domed on the top, very, very slightly domed. You can't really see it and, and such. And then it's got these reinforcing ribs going around it. The problem with making a flat part like this is once you bend it, the circular parts have to reduce in size so they want to tweak. So I have to bend it and then tweak it. Now this part, here, let me take this off. So here, you can see I have put the flange on, this uh, piece of nickel silver around. There's little bolts on top of it that line up with the uh, little tabs. And uh, so that's the GP30. Let me see if I can get that in there. So that's the GP30 fan guard. Now, what I have to do, and this one is, um, let me see, yeah. This one right here. This one's starting to work out well. I just got to tweak it a little bit more. I need to bring it down in size a little bit so it'll fit inside of there. This one was a practice. This one was a practice tweak, and I can't use it because it's got broken. Is this the broken one? No, this is the good one. This one... Yeah, this one has broken wires going around. It's not a good etching. A lot of the etchings, well, not a lot, maybe a quarter of the etchings, these wires did, they, they broke through. So this one's not a good one. But this is the one that I'm going to tweak just a little bit more. And this one almost fits in there. I would have to tweak it some more. And, and so, so it would look something like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this one tweaked a little bit more so it fits in there. And then what I do, once it fits in there, I will hold this, I will hold this fan um, um, piece 
on its side and I'll look down and I'll, and I'll turn it around and I'll make sure that this angle coming up to the middle is the same all the way around before I glue it in place. But this won't get glued on, of course, until after I get the fan built and it's all painted and everything like that. And then I can and I can glue it together. But I want to get this ready to go on. So I think I'm going to be able to use this, and it'll it will uh, it will satisfy me for putting on a a GP30 type type um, um, 36 inch fan. So that's what I wanted to relay to you, the differences between a 35, 36 inch fan and a GP30, 36 inch fan, and how I build it from using the Canon and Company parts. All right, well, I got it to work. And you'll notice that it's not nickel silver. And I'll tell you why in a second. So I can get this to focus in. Come on, you can get focused. There we go. All right, so as you can see, I got it to work. It fits in, it's a piece of brass. Now, what I remembered was the nickel silver I couldn't get to work. I tried like six or seven of them, they just kept falling apart, just like the Canon fans did because the wires were too thin. Every time I tried to do something with it, it would just collapse and the wires would break. I mean, even if I touched them for the smallest amount, they would just tear out. And then I remembered, wait a second, I did them in brass also. And I redesigned them so they had thicker wires. So I've got all these, I've got a few more, but I've got these brass parts and they worked really well. The, the, um, let me get this out of the way. So the, the, let me get a pointer out here. So these circular wires I thickened up. And um, these radial wires, I made a little, just a tad thinner, so there's a little bit more open space in there, so you can see, you can see better down into the grill. So it worked really well, and what made it work was the Canon and Company pan top fan forming tool. So I had to cut the little pin off the top here, and then I would lay this down into the cap here, and then put this on top of it, and it would. I just pressed it down, and because these are brass, they're very malleable, and they just stayed in the shape that they were pressed into. So that worked really, really well. And then I took my my um, um, handle for the for the um, chisel blade, and I just pressed it and worked it around and reduce this diameter enough that it was it didn't quite 100% fit in perfectly but almost I mean it was just a sm very very small amount there that um, um, that I had to work in to the edge so I think if I reduce the total diameter by maybe two thousandths forming it in this tool would make it work perfectly so I have myself a um, a fan or a GP30 style um, grill and, and fan housing. Now, what I'm gonna do is, since this is a rebuild, I can assemble it, the, the fan um, blades in there and the hub, I can paint it, I can put this fan grill on, I can paint it, and then when I get everything done, um, I can, and paint it, I can put this into the shell and, and uh, and uh, then do the clear coat over it and stuff because I don't want to load it down with paint and stuff like that but I don't want to put this grill on after I've you know gotten all everything painted I mean I will put the grill on after I paint the inside and stuff and then and, you know that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna paint the inside um, black because the whole thing is gonna be black so I'll paint the inside black then I will paint the underside of this grill piece black. Then I'll leave it off. I'll put the, the grill, or I'm sorry, the, the fan housing onto the shell along with the 48-inch fans because I don't put the grills on those until the very end also. Then I will um, uh, put the grill on. And when I put these grills on, and this grill will be painted and, and just do it the same way. So... I'm not concerned because this grill went on actually fairly easy. And if I accidentally chip a little bit of the paint, 
it'll be very easy to touch up that paint then come back when I you know because the whole thing needs to be clear coated anyway so I can touch up some paint clear coated and everything will blend in perfectly so I'm really happy that took maybe five minutes to do the whole thing so it worked out really really well this Canon and Company forming tool worked beautifully and if I ever redo these again I'll reduce the diameter by maybe two thousandths like I said and um, uh, and do that so I'm really happy it worked I still have to open up this hole a little bit here to get that to get that fan in there and I'll probably have to open those up a little bit too for that but I have myself what I consider a, a very good representation of a GP30 36 inch um, fan cooling fan so I'm very happy that I remembered I had these I have so much etching stuff just stashed away I forget what I have so I'm very happy I have some of this stuff and uh, so I can now continue and get all these fans um, uh, the bases and everything onto the shell and it's almost ready for for paint all right so I'm making some good progress the exhaust stacks are now glued in place so that's taken care of <clears throat> I've got the fan bases and the fan guard rings um, glued in place, as you can see. So that's taken care of. Next step is to get the grab irons in. Um, as you can see, I've got them plugged here. So I'll trim all that and get the grab irons and the NBWs set in place. After that's done, oh, including uh, the this grab that goes up here and then the fan grab here. <clears throat> I have some really good pictures of a... GP30 roof, a phase two GP30 roof um, for um, that I walked the roof line on and took photographs so I can um, look at all the little intricacies of where the grab, or not grab, where the lift rings are because there's some up here, there's some holes up here <clears throat> for lift rings but they're not in place and then you got these lift rings here. So I'll take care of that and um, I also want to put, I made, <coughs> excuse me, in photo etch I made some little uh, wing nuts that I'm gonna put on the door here and uh, so that'll take care of that um, I still need to put the little angle bracket um, the that goes across here on the inside it's flush with the top of the roof and then it's like um, if I remember correctly it's one and a half by two inch where I believe I'll have to look at pictures I believe the two inches up against the face of the inside of this drop down here and then the one and a half inch is the shelf that comes out so I have to look at my notes on that so this is getting really really close to uh, paint time um, after I get you know all the little things in um, it'll be be ready for paint um, the the fan hubs and fan blades those will be put together separately and painted separately and stuff same goes for the the um, the uh, fan grills what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the the as delivered fan grill the 20 arm fan grill for this forward one and then this one will have been a replaced fan from EMD which at the time um, they got it it would be one of these guys here so I believe either that yeah I, uh, that it'll be it'll be this one so I like to the, the, see the differences of the fans, um, you know, give a little bit of character to the model. So <clears throat> that will take care of that. But actually what I need to do is I need to look and see when this fan, this open top fan was introduced. It may have not been introduced at the time that this was um, model or this was rebuilt it may have still been the um the 10 arm instead of the 20 arm so if that's the case then i'll just use these two 20 arms and just put them in there you know where they're supposed to actually that's probably what i do because i really like the look of these 20 arms the as delivered 20 arms so i'll do that so that takes care of that and uh other than that like i said i'm making good progress this is almost ready for paint and i want to show you guys something what I'm gonna change real quick let's see okay here we go let me zoom <coughs> let me zoom in on this whoop a little too fast there 
that should be coming folk okay now um, where is it at here we go you see this chain that I've got attached to the brake cylinder here well that's supposed to go through this pulley device and then back into the frame and although I can get it to go through the pulley device connecting it up to the frame is really not gonna be all that easy and when I thread this through see if I can push on this here and it's straight you see how close that chain is to the pulley device I mean I can get full um, rotation of the truck in there but for operations I think and I strongly believe this chain is going to be a problem and it's really not going to look all that great because the amount of chain that I have to have hanging down for this truck to swivel is kind of going to look out of place because there's not a lot of chain when you look at the prototype hanging down it's it just more than it just kind of sags in there so for ease of operation or trouble-free operation and stuff, I'm going to cut that chain off. Um, it's, it's really not necessary to be there. I mean, it, it is for like, if I was doing prototype modeling, yes, I would have that chain in there. But for operations and just the joy of modeling, this pulley detail is enough to, um, to tell people that, um, you know, who know about this you know, when they have AAR trucked um, locomotives, that this chain, that there would be a chain going through there. A lot of times, um, chains are fun to model, and they're kind of like give you a little bit of a wow factor, and that's cool, but they can be more trouble than they're worth. So when I get around to fully assembling it and putting the clear coat, the satin clear coat on this, I am going to most likely be cutting that chain off and such. And I, I, I've i come to terms with it and it's like, I really want it on there. And I'm like, you know what? But you're going to be operating these models and I don't want any problems with that chain catching because it's really tight you know, on that pulley. And it's really a, a lot of work to fish it through there and stuff. So if it ever kinks and gets tight and maybe it's going around a curve and, and it, it pulls on the truck and causes the truck to, I, I just don't want to deal with that. So that chain will be coming off. So that's a little bit I wanted to um, talk about there. So other than that, I'm just going to keep making progress on this and hopefully get it done, um, get all three of these uh, GP28s done. Um, I want to have them done before Christmas break. Um, I want to start a new project of have almost three weeks off from work so I want to have a project to get started on from the first day that I have off and finish it before I go back to work so but I got to get these done first and I got to stop procrastinating and I got to stop working on freight cars and and things like that. I just love for working on freight cars I used to love working on locomotives and you couldn't get me away from them and I would just um, you know forget about freight cars but now phew, I, I love working on freight cars and the locomotives are kind of taking a back seat, but I need to get these done. So let's keep the progress going and uh, let me get the get these grab iron nubs or these filled holes um, um, trimmed off and sanded down and let me get this all going because once this goes to paint, the other two will go to paint. All right, well, the build portion is done. I've got everything on it that needs to go on. As you can see, I got the horn on over here. Um, I was going to put the horn back here, but I was like, no, I really don't want to put it back here. I want it on the side of the cab. Um, and I forgot that I had these horns. These are um, the Athern Leslie S3K horns. I like them a lot. I have to say, the Athern horns are beautifully done. Really, really nicely done. I'm going to have to get some more. So, got the cab done. I got the hood done. All these parts here need to be grit blasted. Uh, this, these parts here go to the GP28s, which these hoods are all done and ready for paint. And this hood is done and ready for paint. So let me go over a few things. There's some items I want to show and explain. And um, that'll take care of this video then. So let me get the cab off of here. Put that over there. 
Okay, so let me zoom in a little bit. And get it there. Let's even get it in focus here. There we go. Okay, so first off, um, you saw me putting the stacks on. And you saw the, um, the path box put in. I now have the lift rings here, these four, these two, and then these four back here. So let's go with the lift rings first. Oh, that's too far in. Let me widen that a little bit. There we go. So we got the four lift rings here, the two here, and then the four here. And then we got the one here and here. So on the GP30, there's only two sides of lift rings. Now I went over lift rings on my Pennsylvania GP35, but let me go over it real quick again. Uh, Plano, I use Plano lift rings. Plano makes four sizes of lift rings. They make the 14650, which is this one. This lift ring is used only on um, the GP7s, 9s, um, 18s, and 20s. And all the lift rings on those units use this size. So it's the uh, 14650. On the GP30, they only use two sizes of lift rings. They use one size, this size that's here, and here are the same. And you got these two here, and you got these two on the long hood. Those are the same. So those are, um, just a second. Those are the 14, six, oh, I'm sorry, let me, let me go over this real quick again. Okay, for this lift ring, this lift ring and the two on the side of the hood, that would be 14,651. That's the larger one. That's the one that on like um, GP35s and through dash twos would be on the um, dynamic brake hatch. So that's the uh, 14651s, which are here, 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 and here. Now, the other size lift ring, they don't use the smallest ones on here. They use the 14652. That would be for these four and these four. So that's what you use on, on the GP30. Now, on the GP35 through the Dash 2 series, you'll use, um, we'll start from the top, uh, 14653 would be for the, um, the inertial filter hatch and the exhaust hatch. Then we go to 14652, that would be used on the um, um, radiator fan hatch, and that would be it for that one. And then the 14651, that would be used on the dynamic brake hatch and the sides of the long hood. So that takes care of the lift rings. So now you have another education on which lift rings go where. So we got that done, I've got the fans. Um, housings glued on that went in. I've got the fan hatch grab glued in place. I've got NBWs around it. I've got this NB, um, um, fan grab here and I've got the NBWs for it. So all the NBWs are in place. Um, there's one thing I want to show you and I need to zoom in a little bit and this is on GP30s only. All GP30s have straight grabs all the way around. On the back of the long hood, let me get a pointer out here. So, on the back of the long hood, like I said, all grabs are straight. You'll notice the NBWs are on top, except for this top grab, it's on the bottom. I almost put it on the wrong way and I started looking at pictures and I saw where the NBW was underneath the grab iron. So I started looking at other GP30s just to get a, um, a cross-section of GP30s, and they all had that, like that. So that takes care, so I got that correct before I put it on and then didn't realize it. And that's the kind of stuff that's fun, you know, with modeling, is finding those little variations and, and such. So that's all done. So this hood is all done. Oh, and you can't even see them 
really, but I do have wing nuts here and, and here. Now, in uh, once those are painted and everything, you're not going to see any of that. Now, in the last clip, I believe it was, I had talked about the the type of fan grills that were going to go on these, and I was like, I want to put this open top one on the back here, and then I said, oh no, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, the 20 arm spiral on both of them because I didn't know when this one came into being. Well, it turns out this came into being in uh, 1967. This rebuild was done in early 68. So I am going to use the open top one because I it's it's within my era and I really wanted to have like a variation of fan grills on there. So I'll be using that one there. I need to grit blast these fans. Um, I also had to rebuild the rear um, light section and number board. So um, these number boards will get painted black. So I'll paint all of this first. Then I'll glue it. Actually, it goes in this way. Then I'll glue it in. Or before I glue it in, I have to take the tape off. This is covering up the uh, the uh, lights. Then I'll glue that in. And then in the before I paint the hood, of course, I will um, put little bits of paper tissue in there. Oh, sorry. I'll put tissue inside the uh, light holes so that paint won't cover anything in there. And then this will be glued in. I figured, well, if the cab number boards are glued in, there's no reason why I can't glue in the, the rear number boards. Because if the lights ever go out, which I don't think they will, I think I'll be okay. But if they ever go out, this unit will just not be a lead unit ever. That's all there is to it there. So no big deal. Um, other than that, there's nothing else to show on the hood. Everything has been taken care of. All the parting lines have been cleaned up. Um, oh, on the inside, on the inside, what I've done is you can see right in here. Is it here or here? Right there. You see that white piece of plastic in there? That's a little shelf so that this piece of plastic will go in right here. And you won't be able to see down in through the fans to all the electronics on the inside. So I got to grip blast that and get it painted black. Um, I got to get all this painted black. So the next time you see this, it'll all be in black. Actually, the next time you see this, the cab will be glued on and everything will be in black and ready for decals. So like I said, I got to grip blast these fans and get them um, painted. These ones will be painted black because... This is a rebuild, so they just repainted everything um, um, the same color, and they didn't bother, you know, taking the fans out to not paint them and stuff. These fans will be painted like the um, the GP35, the uh, Pennsylvania GP35, and they'll be done in dull aluminum because on the GP28s, those are as delivered from EMD. And I went through my explanation of why I believe all of these were painted or all left unpainted so so these have to get painted black this has to be grip blast these have to be grit. actually these have already been grip blast you can see how dark they are they've been sitting out and oxidizing over time so I'll probably grip blast them again just to um, to um, take the oxidation off of them and such um, I, when I was going to use the um, <clears throat> the uh, we call it the um, the 20 arm fan grill here I only had two of the original Canon 20 arm fan grills I have more in a box but I didn't notice it but I had some of the new Canon grills that he has etched from a different manufacturer and quite honestly you can you can visually see the difference these wires look round even though they're flat the way that Gordon had them etched at the etcher that he used they were able to manipulate the etching so that the grill arms look round on Dave's new etchings everything looks visually flat so um, thankfully I have enough to do what like I said before enough to do what I want to do so anyway that takes care of this it's time for to get this into paint and same with the other 28 to get those into paint well that takes care of the build portion of this uh, GP30 rec rebuild into a uh, GP28 um, I'm really enjoying how it's turning out. I think it looks very realistic and very plausible of a 
rebuilt locomotives and, and such. So the next time you see this, it will be in paint and probably decal. Um, I don't know, you know, where I'm going to decide to start filming at it again. Maybe right after it gets painted, I'll show that before I decal. I, I don't know yet. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you find it um, entertaining. And um, I feel like I've moved along with the build fairly quickly and not too much procrastinating. And I really look forward to getting this model or all three of these models done so that I can move on to something maybe more exciting. So anyway, um, I really appreciate your time and thank you very much for watching.